Wait, are you filming? Yeah, screw it. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Today we're learning how to curve a soccer ball. And more importantly, the physics behind it. So just to start off, here's an example of someone curving a soccer ball from a free kick. And I'm going to show you how it's possible that the ball can be on the side of the wall, as shown here, and somehow end up in the goal. Now, before we get into that, I just want to talk about some of the physics behind curving a soccer ball. Uh, and the first thing we're going to talk about is the Bernoulli effect. So the Bernoulli effect essentially states that the faster the wind speed is on one side of an object, the less pressure there will be on that same side, and vice versa. The slower the wind speed is on one side of an object, the more pressure there will be on that side of the object. And one other important thing to note is that objects will always move from high pressure to low pressure. So if you take a look at the diagram on the right, that airplane wing would move upwards because there's less pressure above it and more pressure below it. And the reason why the Bernoulli effect is important to us is because a very similar principle is what causes a spinning soccer ball to curve. And that principle is called the Magnus effect. So if you take a look at the diagram on the right, you'll see a ball that is spinning clockwise and essentially the lower side of the ball has a slower wind speed and therefore a higher pressure because it's moving against the wind and the upper side has a higher speed and less pressure because it's moving with the wind so because the bottom side of the ball has a higher pressure and the top side of the ball has a lower pressure due to the Bernoulli effect we know that the ball will move up towards the side with less pressure so this is known as the Magnus effect and the upward force is known as Magnus force and you can see the equation for it in the left and the S in this equation stands for resistance of the ball W is the angular velocity or essentially the spin of the ball and the linear velocity is how fast the ball is moving in whatever direction it was kicked So just to go over that and also go a little bit over pressure, pressure is the force per area on the ball. And on one side of the ball, the panels go against the wind, resisting it, slowing it down, and creating more pressure. And on the other side of the ball, it moves with the wind, meaning less pressure. And the ball will always move towards the side that has less pressure. You're trying to curve a ball. Where do you hit it? If you're a lefty, that's the sweet spot. So what I'm saying here is that if you're a lefty and you hit it in that sweet spot, it will cause the ball to start turning clockwise. And because of that, the ball will curve towards the right. And on the other side, if you're using your right foot, it's essentially the same thing, but just the opposite side. If you hit it there, the ball will begin to rotate counterclockwise, meaning it will curve towards the left. So here's an example of me using this technique to curve the ball in from the corner. So you'll see right here, I hit the ball right in the sweet spot. So as you can see here, if the ball was traveling straight, it wouldn't go in the goal. However, because it is curving clockwise, it curves towards the right and goes into the goal. So here's an example of me doing it from the other side of the goal. And this time the ball rotates counterclockwise and curves to the left. And yeah, that's how you curve a soccer ball into a goal and the physics behind it. Thanks for watching. 90th minute World Cup final. Goalie's thinking, where's he gonna put it? You know what I'm thinking? Magnus effect. <laughs>